Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man with Barnsley in today's episode. We're going to play through the January transfer window, trying to improve our squad to be able to push for a playoff spot. Or maybe automatic. So in the last episode we did have a disappointing defeat against QPR but we bounced back straight away with a 4-0 away win against Millwall. They did have a man sent off 5 minutes in but just ignore that for a second. Apo Halme, Jordan Ibe, Alex Mowat and Jacob Brown getting the goals and it was really was a return to form. Next up was an absolutely massive 4-1 home win against West Brom. Jordan Ibe, Malik Wilkes and Collie Woodrow with a brace getting our 4 goals. We did have Cameron McGeehan sent off in the 58th minute. So Kenneth Zahor did score for uh, West Brom and it made a, it was 3-1 at the time and I started to panic a little bit. But thankfully, Collie Woodrow got another goal, sailed the win. Really, really fantastic against one of the best sides in the league. And finally, we went away from home against Swansea City and went 1-0 down. Eight minutes in, Kalulu getting the first goal for Swansea, but then we came back with a vengeance. Collie Woodrow with a brace, Malik Wilkes, Beecho and Rayan Brewster all getting on the score sheet. And seeing us win 5-1. Absolutely massive three games for us. And that sees the Sky Bet Championship looking like this. We sit in fourth position on 48 points. Only four points of Fulham in second place. We are now five points clear from QBR in seventh. And things are really, really looking good for us. You know, we've got the January transfer period now to be able to improve our squad. To maybe get promoted in the first season, which will be absolutely fantastic. Would it be ideal? Probably not. We could probably do with another season in the championship to be able to build our squad. Because at the minute, it's still very much a lower championship squad. But we're performing well above expectations. And as soon as we get into the Premier League, of course, we're going to take it. So the transfer window has now opened and a couple of bits of business have already happened. Mike Stephen Barrier has went and joined uh, Dynamo Dresden for 550k. Um, he was one of our attack midfielders who was about third or fourth choice. So it's pointless keeping him at the club. So he's left and we've got a little bit of money back in the bank. We have made one signing, Van der Heerde. We have signed him from um, Heravine, I believe. And he looks absolutely unreal. He's three star, five star, 18 years old. Plenty of uh, potential and room to grow. I am retraining him to be an inverted winger on the right hand side. And potentially, he's, he's one of the players who could really benefit from us staying in the championship for one more year. If we are to get promoted this season, Chances are he's going to find his game time limited, but at least for the second half of this season, he's going to be coming on an awful lot for Wilkes on that right-hand side and hopefully improving his game. But we signed him for 120 k Absolutely stupid price for this sort of quality at 18 years old. I'm hoping he, he could become massive. Just a few other bits and bobs that we've managed to um, get done during the downtime. We've got our youth facilities being improved, two million pounds. Our data analysis facilities are also being improved. Alongside our training, we've already increased our scouting range. The board have let me increase the uh, percentage of transfer revenue in case we get any offers for some of our higher valued players. And it's just absolutely, everything's working a treat. Because we're doing so well in the league, pretty much anything I ask for, the board are bending over backwards to be able to do, which is always fantastic. So at the moment, we've got five games in January. I think that could increase if we end up beating Bournemouth in the FA Cup. But if not, we've got five games. I'll play them all off camera. We'll update you on every single one. And of course, I'll keep you updated on any transfer business that should happen. <laughs> we've just played Derby away from home and absolutely smashed them. They weren't even in the game, even a little bit. Corley Woodrow with a brace, Jordan Ibe with a brace and Malik Wilkes getting the other to make it 5-0. We did manage to get... Um, Arjen van der Heerde on. Didn't really perform that well in the final half hour, but it's all important to give him much experience and game time. Wayne Rooney was absolutely dreadful. Ah, we're out of the FA Cup. Unfortunately, we couldn't get quite get past Premier League Bournemouth. Jordan I couldn't start today's game either, so we had to make changes to the first 11. And we had a poor performance in all, honestly. And Bournemouth, once they went 1-0 up, they just sort of sat back and we didn't really create too many opportunities. It is to be expected. The Premier League uh, side... I think they did actually rotate a little bit for our our game, but they still have the likes of Callum Wilson and Nathan Ake starting. So, unfortunate, but we take it on the chin. Just a few other bits and bobs while we're here. The uh, board has agreed to let me sign more coaches, which is absolutely fantastic. I would like to have more sc uh, scouts as well, and they're just agreeing to pretty much anything I say right now. So I'm going to go for the big one. I'm going to go see if they're going to increase our transfer budget. Um, <laughs> the they let me choose how much. Um, that's that's fine. They're going to give us an extra 650k, which isn't too bad. So we now have 
uh, transfer budget, 1.8 million and 18k available in the wages. But I'm hoping to make one huge addition in Constantinus Mavropanas. He will come in and automatically be our best centre half by a country mile. And if we can get him in for the rest of the season, it really strengthens our squad for the second half of this season and maybe a promotion push. I wouldn't have minded of signing Jordan Ibe at the end of the season when his contract runs out, but it looks like he's probably going to go to Saudi Arabia um, as we can't approach to sign him until is it is a one month out from his uh, deal ending. So it looks like we won't be having him next season. He's been fantastic in the championship and I would have loved to have given him a chance back in the Premier League, but likelihood is he's going to end up leaving to Saudi Arabia. Second signing of the January transfer window confirmed Konstantinos Mavropanas could be the one that makes all the difference in the playoff slash promotion push. He is an absolutely massive signing for us. Automatically straight away our best centre back. If we just compare him with our other um, starting centre back Diaby. He is just a cut above airily defensively and in his speed. And if we go to that rebuke page. He is just like a step above. And to get a player like him in. It was probably um, a good player for most. He's not a good player for most Sky Bear Championship sides. I think he's more of a leading player in my opinion. Touching on potentially becoming a Premier League centre half. But um, absolutely fantastic to be able to bring him, in, bring him in. We're only paying 7k per week of his um, transfers. Uh, his transfers, his wages. And that still leaves us 1.8 million and 11k left remaining. Which does leave me in a bit of predicament. Because it's very difficult to sign a player who could challenge for um, a first team spot in our current starting 11. Whilst also having at least the potential to be a Premier League player next season or the season after. It's it's very, very difficult. And in terms of our team report, and if we go to our squad depth, uh, one of the main areas where we are weak is left back. We are very, very weak. So I am peppering bids in for random left backs from throughout Europe and Argentina. We'll see if any of them come to fruition. Um, but at the minute, left back is my main area of concern now. Now we've signed Mavro Panas. A defeat in the league. Barnsley nil, Huddersfield won. We were at home and we did have the majority of the chances on the possession. But... They defended incredibly well. They played like a 4-5-1 with the defensive midfielder. And we just couldn't break them down. And unfortunately, we drop out, drop three points here. Which should have been a win. I think Huddersfield beat us away from home as well. It's obviously a team we struggle with quite heavily. And I want to see where that drops us in the table. It obviously knocks us way back in terms of the promotion push for automatic. We are still only three points away from Fulham though. So again, no real team is pulling away with this. We are sticking with the crowd. But now QPR have closed the gap to four points in seventh position just outside the playoffs. There is a big gap between us and uh, Bristol City in eighth. So we are keeping that gap relatively well established in that regard from being a mid-table side from being a playoff side. But a disappointing, disappointing result. And there's Jordan Ibe agreeing a deal with Al Itihad, and he won't be available in the summer. Boo-hoo. I think our hand has been forced now. We must make a signing of a left back during this January transfer window. Ben Williams has picked up a three month torn abdominal muscle injury and unfortunately that pretty much takes him out for the vast majority of the rest of the season. Um, he's our starting left back and it's probably going to ruin his development as well which is sad to see but uh, it was an area we already identified that we needed improving so that just means I have to do it now. I can't just rest on me laurels with me 1.8 million. So, we've had an offer accepted and made a bid for Miko Albanoz. We've, he is available on a free at the end of the season, but that's no good to me. I kind of need him now. Um, he's 29 years old, which is something I, do, I very rarely do. But he is ideal for the rest of this season. And maybe uh, probably good enough to be able to have one season in the Premier League as well. He's four-star, four-star. Um, he's pretty decent in terms of his pros. Not very many cons either. And with Ben Williams' injury... It's the sort of move I've got to make. He's cheap. He's uh, he's accepted a contract so far. So we'll wait and see. He's from um, the second division in the uh, Germany. But uh, it will be ideal to get him in like right now. Another game. Another defeat. This time it's to the hands of Bristol City. Away from home. It was a pretty even game. All things told. But they took their chances. We didn't. The likes of Malik Wilkes had a really poor game. And unfortunately for us. It's our second defeat in a row in the league. And there we have it, our third signing of the January transfer window and likely to be our last as our transfer budget is pretty depleted at this point. Miko Albanoz, our left back from Hanover 96, was signing. 
due to Ben Williams' three-month injury. He is an upgrade, but at 29 years old, <laughs> something I'm not particularly comfortable with. But the aim of this series isn't to develop loads of young players and get them involved like I would usually do. It's about getting as good of a squad as possible, like getting the Premier League, and then again, getting another squad capable of challenging in the Premier League as best as we can to see how high we can finish in that first season. And I think he meets that criteria. We are falling apart at the seams. Three games, three defeats in a row in the league. This time, it's at home against Preston. Not a good result whatsoever. They went 3-0 up inside 50 minutes. Rafferty, Johnson, Maguire with the goals for them. Jordan and I have got a late consolation in the 91st minute, but my upgrades to defence uh, don't seem to have really worked. <laughs> And the January transfer, transfer window closes with a whimper. We didn't do anything, any other business. Uh, nobody came in for any of our players with only a million pounds to spend. We didn't really have the funds to be able to improve our first 11. But we'll run through a couple of things. As you can see, our wage expenditure is the third least in the league. Uh, transfer window roundup. We were the most active signing three players, but obviously none for very high fees. And yeah, a bit of an underwhelming one, purely down to the results. As you can see... In the championship now, we currently sit in sixth position, only one point ahead of QPR. We are now eight points off automatic. And I guess that was always a little bit of a pipe dream. You know, we got ourselves, I got myself carried away a little bit with our early season form. If we are to get in the playoffs, that is absolutely fantastic. But if we don't, it's not the end of the world. We're not expected to get promoted in this season. And as I've said uh, previously in this episode, it might even be for the best if we don't. It'll let us strengthen the squad a little bit more, give us one more season to prepare for the Premier League. And that's fine by me. But we are still going to push for it. And in the next... <laughs> just look at them four defeats in a row. In the next episode, then, we will be returning and we will look to face Cardiff and QPR in March. Big lump of games in between there. And facing QPR, we might still be in the playoff uh, chances at that point and it might be a big game. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.